planner season, which is my favorite time of year. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love the possibilities of a fresh start. I love the newness of a new system. I love the reflection of what worked and what didn't work last year. And now let's figure out what we're going to do for this next year. I love it so much. However, <laughs> I got to make some changes. So this is going to be a bit of a longer video. So grab your favorite drink and let's talk planners. Okay, you guys, let's dive in to the planner talk. So first, I'm going to start off by giving you a little bit about my philosophy and how things have changed, because I think it's important when you start thinking about your planners that you're going to use to really reevaluate, is this actually working, especially when it comes to planners that can be both functional and can be a hobby. And that is the way it has been for me. Like my planners not only help me get more done and help me organize my thoughts, they also are fun and they fill my heart with joy <laughs> and I love them. And so sometimes I feel tempted because I just love the, like when I see other people using them or I love the brand or the type of paper, I love the stickers, I get tempted to want to use all the different brands. And in the past in my life, I have had more time to be able to you know, indulge in that and be able to use different planners and different brands. And in fact, it has actually served me over the last few years to be able to separate some of my businesses and the way that I plan into a lot of different planners. So if you go back and watch my 2020, 2021, 2022 planner lineups, I think I started them in 2019. I have used, you know, somewhere around 20 to 25 planners and notebooks in various ways almost every year things are changing this year. And that is mostly because my life is also changing. I am running basically what boils down to multiple businesses. We'll say two major brands, but my Heart Breathings brand has so many different facets to it, including an Etsy shop and other things. And even though I hired my first full-time person this year, and I'm probably going to be adding someone else, it still has come to a point where here's what happens. I want to use all the different things and I want to be able to use all the stickers and everything, but I don't actually have time. And because I am not getting as much of my writing done and I'm sacrificing other things, it's especially important that I streamline my systems. Another thing that happens is when I do have free time to be able to play in my planners like a hobby, I have so many different choices that I can't really derive joy from any one planner. It's like, if this was my planner was the Hobonichi weeks, then I could every night when I had time work in this one planner and I would be joyful and happy. But when you have 10 different planners that you could use stickers in or go do things or do memory keeping, it's suddenly like, I don't know, I have too much choice. And I know this is a very like <laughs> privileged problem to have too much choice, but it's, also just eating away at my joy that I have too much choice and not enough time, too many options, not enough time. And the other big thing that has changed in my life is that as I bring on new employees or team members, it gets very difficult for me to share with them the plans that I have inside a paper planner. I have found myself sometimes snapshotting things and sending a picture to Renee to tell her about my editorial plans which really is not the most efficient way to do it. It should be in some kind of database where we can share and we have a notion set up, but I just don't always use it because I've always been more of a paper planner. But the long and short of it is I need to make some changes, streamline my process, just bring myself down to a few planners that I really love and can use in 2023 and just let go of the rest. And I happen to have uh, probably at least 10 planners that I have purchased for the year that I will not be using. So you guys will get to enjoy that because I'm going to be giving away some of those planners, including this Hobonichi Weeks and a Hobonichi Cousin and more. So I'll be sharing those giveaways today. 
I'll be doing two different giveaways today on this video in the comments by next Friday. Just leave a comment, make sure you're subscribed and that you've liked this video. And then the rest of them will go like on my newsletter or on future videos over the next coming weeks, because I would rather give them away and have people enjoy them and get a chance to use them than let them sit around all year and not use them. I'm going to share with you sort of how the system is changing and what I'm going to use instead and a little bit about why I'm not using those things anymore. So first of all, let's talk about Hobonichi's. I am obsessed with this brand. I love the Tomo River paper. I have used Hobonichi planners, particularly the cousin for five years now, at least maybe more. And I love it. I bought the regular A6 size last year, hoping that I was going to use them more. And I used maybe 10 pages and just really didn't use them. I'm going to hold on to this planner because this is from last year, because I might end up using this in some future way of like redating it or something like that. And it's already partially used, but I'm not buying another one of these. This is just the regular Hobonichi Techo. But what I did buy was I bought a week's and I bought this gorgeous Malia Kent tweed cover, which was quite pricey, but it was so beautiful. And I also bought a new Hobonichi cousin for 2023. And I bought these from the Hobonichi website in Japan, thinking obviously that I was going to use them. And I have this Hobonichi five-year journal, which basically has a small section to write a few lines for every day. And it has a page for every day of the year. So this will last me from 2020 to 2024. And then I'll get another one in 2025 and it'll go every five years. But I bought this nice cover. This is the one of the Mina Peronin covers. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but it's so beautiful. This one stays. So this I have kept up with pretty religiously for three years of every single day. And I love part of my evening routine when I'm reading my tarot and I'm getting ready for bed, just writing a few little things. And this is where I say things like Evie took her first step or, um, you know, we, <laughs> I got number one in Kobo, number one Amazon new release. Like just remembering those kinds of things are so important. And some of it's just the mundane. We went to get ice cream, but it's fun to read back what we were doing. This other page I haven't really used and I may not use it at all, but I do love this and it will be something good that hopefully even my kids will look back on later. So this stays as part of my planner system, but this one I use every night and it only takes me like two minutes to fill that out. I have been using the cousin for, like I said, multiple, multiple years in different ways. But for the past three or four years, I've been using it as a tarot journal, I think four years. And this is my one from 2021. Some of the stuff came off of it, but you can see how much I used it and loved it, like adored it. And it really grew and it was used on a daily basis. This one came on the trip with me, but this year's cousin, you can see did not get as much use because I didn't write on every day. And in fact, you could turn to almost any month here and you could find a page or 10 pages in a row, some cases that like, look at this, like that I just didn't write in. And there's a reason why. And that is because every night when I go to get ready or go to read my tarot cards and stuff, I write in this one. And then I write in this one. And then I also have this newer addition to my system this year, which is for six months for life. And if you guys want me to share more about that, I'll do it in another video. But six months for life is a program that I have designed just for my own personal use. But then I talked about it so much on my Friday coffee chats that a lot of people are also doing it with me. But it's this idea of taking six months of your life to focus on the habits and the way you want to show up in the world. So where my HB90 is more about business or your goals, six months for life is more about like your personal growth journey. And so in July, when I started this next round of six months for life, I started in a B6 Stalogy and there are pieces of it that I ended up not using, but for the most part, I have kept up with a habit tracker. I've been journaling and spending a lot of time in this. I've been putting vision boards and almost every night I'm journaling or writing something in here. There's a lot of tip-ins. There's some of my tarot stuff have got, has gone into here. And so when I find that I write in here, I don't also necessarily want to sit down and write in my tarot journal. So the thing that I've been keeping up with in my tarot journal is 
in the beginning of a Hobonichi, there's this yearly sort of dashboard where it's a, a line for every day of the year. And I've been keeping up with my tarot readings. Then there's a weekly section where I write the tarot card I drew for the day and then just a little bit of a message for myself about it. And what I used to do was then a daily page as well. But more and more, my daily pages end up going into here. And so here's two journals that really should be one. And this is what I'm talking about, like just bringing it all into one, because I don't want to feel sad that I'm not using this one. I just want to be all in on one thing. And so what I'm going to be doing for 2023 is I'm going to be trying out the planner that you've probably seen a lot of people talking about, which is the Sterling Inc. planner. This is the common planner. And it is basically a B6 size cousin. <laughs> it's so similar. And uh, these, this I got on pre-order. I know she was releasing some extra stock, but I don't know if they're sold out. Um, she was giving them either in a one year book or in uh, two six month journals. And I thought how perfect because I can now combine my Hobonichi cousin with my six months for lifestyleology in this B6 size that I'm really loving and have it in six month increments for six months for life. So this new Sterling Inc. Common Planner is going to be my tarot journal and my daily six months for life journaling, my habit tracking and all of that. Uh, now I'm sure, I'm sure you've seen some walkthroughs of this. If not, I will post a link to it for you down below, but this is very similar in structure to the Hobonichi cousin, except it's not Japanese, first of all, and it's B6 size, and it's just a little bit more minimalist. So you've got a 2023 overview. You have some blank pages here. You have some sort of goal breakdown pages, which I think will be good for my six months for life because I have all my goals in HB90, but this will be fun to include here. And then I also have, there's quarterly sections here where you can write down your quarterly goals, which will be good for my six months for life. But then if you can see this right here is very, very similar to that Hobonichi cousin um, type of yearly overview page that I was using in this way. So I can still keep this tradition in this planner. And then similarly, after the monthly pages, there's the same type of weekly pages that I found over here. So I can move what I was using in this planner over to this one here. And then after all the weekly pages, you just have a very blank grid daily page. And what I like about this, as opposed to the cousin is there's no writing on this. There's no dates, there's no times. So here I feel a little bit more pressure to write every day. And over here, I could really skip days or I could put two or three days onto one page and I can make it more of like a true notebook and journal. And so I'm really excited. So I have the mauve for the first half of the year and this sort of linen texture for the second half of the year. It has this really big, beautiful, has this really beautiful gold edging. And I just think it'll be great. Now, well, will it hold up to taping in vellum and tip-ins and pasting in photos and stuff? I don't know. It seems like a similar binding to the Hobonichi and to the Stalogy. So I'm hoping it'll, if it falls apart, we'll go back to a Stalogy, but I will keep you guys updated on how that goes. But now my evening routine will just be these two instead of three different ones. So that's one way that I can sort of streamline the process. Now I will be purchasing a special cover for this one that I will share with you guys later in the year, because I have, let's just say a potential contract coming that is for something that I've been dreaming of for a long time. And when that specific money comes in, I have a very specific notebook cover I want to buy for this that I will always remember was part of that contract. So that is going to get purchased later. And I will bring you guys along on a little vlog once that becomes a reality, but I'm excited for those. Now, because of that, <laughs> I no longer, now this was uh, two years ago, but because of that, I no longer need this Hobonichi cousin. So this will be another thing that I'm giving away. And in fact, this is the giveaway that I will do. One of the two giveaways I will do for this video. So make sure you comment down below, make sure you're subscribed and make sure you hit the like button. And I will choose a winner next Friday, December, whatever, 15th or whatever day that is. 
to win the Hobonichi Cousin. Now, I'm not giving away this uh, tweed cover because it was quite expensive and it's really beautiful. And I do still use A5 notebooks throughout the year. So I think I will use this, if not this year, then in the future. And I'm glad that I have it. So I'm keeping this, but I won't be using it in my planner the way I expected. But the Hobonichi Cousin is a giveaway. In addition, Hobonichi Weeks. I always want to use them. I have already purchased so many stickers for them. I always love when other people use them and they just look so nice. And it's just one of those FOMO things of like, oh, I'll put this in my purse and I'll use it for my budget planner and I'll keep track of my expenditures. Like I did like one, literally one day of it and one month of stickers. And then I didn't use it. And yet look what I did. I still bought a new one for 2023 because I was like, this year I'm going to use it. And as I begin really paring back and thinking about myself and what I want for this next year, I'm like, nope, no more FOMO. I'm just simply not going to use this planner. So this 2023 Hobonichi Weeks will be another giveaway in a future video. Not going to use it. So let's talk about the B6 Stalogy because I have loved this size. Now I will be using the Sterling Ink B6, but I still do love the Stalogy and I'm going to be using it, but in another capacity. So this one is almost finished and it will be finished basically by the end of the year. And I love it. And I wanted to keep using this size and this is going to replace a different planner. So I bought a couple because they were on special deal for Black Friday, like $16 a piece. And then I also bought some of these covers. So this one has a Lauren Phelps designs cover on it with some uh, planner society paper underneath to make it pretty. So I'm going to do the same thing. I bought these from the honey bee shop. I'll link that down below and it'll just go whoop, right on top. And then I can put some fun paper in here and I've got multiples of these. And let me show you why. If you are new to my channel, you won't really get, get this, but some people probably will gasp when you hear this because it is a bit shocking in planner terms, but I am a writer and for the last multiple years, I have been using a happy planner for my writing planner, my plotting planner. This isn't so much a planner in terms of like a weekly planner or a monthly planner, but it is where I keep all my ideas for my books. It's where I track things. I didn't even finish my pixel tracker, but it's, it's, I have enjoyed using this type of happy planner because you can print pages and you can put them in, you can pull them out, but there have been some problems with using this as my plotting notebook. I'm trying to get to a page that <laughs> doesn't have spoilers on it. One of them is that it's so big and heavy that if I want to go outside and I want to watch the kids play and I want to sit in my little egg chair and just be happy out there, or if I want to go to a coffee shop, this becomes so big. And I used to use a big size, like big happy planner. This is a classic size. And I downgraded to this one, hoping that that would be easier. But I do find that I still am sometimes not picking it up. And instead I'll pick up a notebook more like this size. So even this, though, this is my six months for life planner inside here, I do have some of my journaling about what's going on with my characters. And that is not good to have it in multiple places. So I have decided to try out instead of using a happy planner, using a B6 Stalogy as my plotting planner, in addition to online digital tools, which I'll talk about in a minute. But this was my husband, George's idea, because he was like, you know, when, when I finish a book in my happy planner, I tend to just, because the pages come out, I tend to just pull the pages out, kind of throw them in a drawer and then put new pages in. And then later when I want to go look up what's happened with that book, sometimes I can't find the pages or they're out of order or Evie's gotten into them or they've gotten crinkled. And it's not the same as having a bound book that you can look back on. And when I was on the road last year, some of you may remember that I put together a look term uh, planner. It was just a, a notebook to kind of be a memory keeping journal of me finishing my book. Then I didn't end up really working on the book. I kind of abandoned that look term. So now I'm going back to that idea and instead thinking of keeping all of my character journaling, all of my plot journaling 
even all of my like plotting notes and everything in this B6 Stalogy. And I don't know, I bought two because I don't know if I'll fill one out in a year or if it'll take me six months or if it'll take me three months. So I went ahead and grabbed two and it could be that this becomes the entire book of book 12 goes into here, or it could be that this is three or four books. And I don't know yet how this will look, but I will keep you guys updated on how this ends up turning out. So not so much a planner, more of a notebook, but it is replacing this larger planner, which is another way that I'm trying to kind of streamline and simplify and make my planners work for my life rather than try to fit into old habits or other things. Because this way I can just take this very small thing. It'll fit into any purse that I want to use. I can sit out on the back porch and easily write in it. I can take it to any coffee shop without it taking up a lot of space and we'll see how it goes. But that is the plan for my new plotting planner. And this one will just go on a shelf for a little while and we'll see how it goes. Okay. So happy planners in general, I have been using multiple over the last few years and I have to kind of uncover them because I have planners literally all over this room. So I have been using them in multiple capacities, both ones that I have put together just using the rings and my own printed pages and some of them that I've been using that are actual official happy planner type things. So this one is a budget planner that I bought last year. It's undated. And I keep thinking that I'm going to keep track of all these things. But the truth is, I don't really need to keep track of bills and things that are due. They all auto go. And I don't really need to keep track of that. I do need to keep track of my individual spending on like planner stuff or what's coming in, what I ordered. And these aren't really structured properly. So I'm letting it go. This will be another giveaway coming up in the future. Another way that I have in the past year or really the past multiple years used a happy planner is as my meal planner. And so I will write breakfast, lunch, and dinner in here. And I have it sitting out on the kitchen counter so that my husband can see what we're going to eat. It holds me accountable for what I was going to eat for the day. But again, where this is something I had time to like put stickers in and put thought into in the past I just simply can't keep up with it. And then my husband is like, where's the meal plan? And I'm like, I didn't have time to do it this week. And it's just become a little bit of a headache. <laughs> so I purchased, of course, a beautiful 2023 12 month planner and I haven't even opened it. This one is really nice. It's very pretty, like kind of pinks and rose gold colors. This is going to be a giveaway. No more meal planner for me. And I'll show you in a minute what I'm going to use instead. So simplifying, no more physical meal planner, no more budget planner, no more meal planner, no more huge happy planner. It's we're getting there. We're getting there. Now, these happy planners are really not happy planners. These are my HB 90 goal planners. So I have my HB 90 weekly daily planner that I keep inside my A5 binder, which I'll go over in a minute. But I also have a goals planner that is the goal setting workbook for my HB 90 goal setting system for the whole year. It has Q1 through Q4. I used this in 2021 for part of the year. And then we went on the road for other part of the year. And then I also used this one for most of the year in 2022. But I find that sometimes instead of doing the reviews in here, I'll do the reviews in something more like this. And sometimes I find that I, I don't know, I just, it's so, it's so big and setting my goals here and everything I really enjoy. And I love this system. Obviously I created it. I love it. It's my ride or die, but I want to do something a little bit different than having to like pull this out you know, and have it sitting on the shelf and have it be big and, and all of this. So no more of these. I'm not going to be printing out the 2023 goal planner. And I wish that I had it to share with you today, but I have a collaborator that isn't quite finished with it. So let me show you instead what I'm going to do. And I'm going to kind of adjust this light here for you. This is my brand new 12.9 inch iPad Pro that I got as a gift to myself for winning NaNoWriMo last month. And part of the reason that I wanted this so badly is because I am going to be using my goals planner digitally. So like I said, I don't have one to show you today, but it is coming soon. She's almost finished with it. But what I do have is the HB90 method undated that I can kind of share with you. So 
um, Jordan Davis helped me p- move my design into a digital format. And I know many of you have already purchased this, but this is a hyperlinked planner. So it looks like your regular planner, but it's all in digital in good notes. You can use this in something like Zoto or whatever with any kind of pen and it's hyperlinked. So you can go to your vision statement here. You can go to set your goals here and you can write it all in here. And she's creating one of these for the goals planner, which will have all four quarters in it. Now this one, the undated quarterly has weekly spreads and daily spreads in it. Whereas the goals planner won't have the weekly spreads. And so you can get either one. This is currently on sale on Etsy. So I'll link it down below and the Q1 dated planner and the goals planner are coming soon, but you can put stickers in these. You can write on them. You can erase, you can try again. And this will help me keep it with me anytime I have my iPad with me rather than having to carry and lug that huge thing. Now, This, along with some of the other changes I'm making to go digital, scare me just a little bit because I have always been an out of sight, out of mind person, but I think it's going to be fine in this case because I also have my Kanban boards on my wall and I'm going to still be keeping my weekly spreads in my A5 binder. So I'm pretty excited to be going a little bit more digital and you can put digital stickers in here. There's so much that you can do and there's more that I'm going to be doing digitally than just this, but I wanted to show you that since we were talking about happy planners. Okay. So let's talk about my ride or die, like main goal business weekly planner. So this is an A5 ring binder. I have been using them for many years and I will continue to use them, but I'm going to be completely changing the system that is going inside of this planner. I'm kind of doing an overhaul and I've been really thinking about what do I actually need? What am I actually going to use? Because more and more I have all these little tabs and I find that I'm not using a lot of these pages. So I'm going to overhaul this system and I will share with you more in detail. How cute did this turn out by the way? Like I, this is a big part of my joy with planning. It's like, I love to set up a different planner, a different, you know, a five binder. I have multiple of them. I love to set them up with each month with a different theme. And like this Christmas, it's just a creative outlet for me and I want to keep doing it, but I am going to take these cloth and paper. (laughs) They need to be cleaned too, but these are her glass plastic dividers and I'm going to be pulling the labels off and remaking them with new ones. So I will share that with you in the future. One of the things that I'm going to do is I bought a bunch of inserts from Elamon Paper Co. I love her shop. I love her paper. It's very similar to my HP premium paper and I like her very clean designs. So she had these little quarter sheet or half sheet list and I figured this would be perfect to basically have as a gist list in the front of my planner. So behind my little intro page, there's going to be this list that lives here. That's going to be basically anything that is on my to-do list. That is something I need to remember, not necessarily my goals, but things like don't forget to schedule a dentist appointment. Don't forget to get the oil change. Like some of those things that I just keep sort of letting fall by the wayside (laughs) cleaning things, house things, kind of home management to do type reminders. They're going to live right here. Then I've got this inbox, which I haven't fully decided how I'm going to use yet. Um, And then I have usually a little printed vision board in here. I've got this HB90 goal setting section, which basically has my like ideal schedule and it has some of my task block trackers. I will be keeping this probably, but some of this is going to be moving into digital format too. So I'll share that with you as we go. Then I have monthly calendars here, which truthfully I don't end up using a lot. So I might also just be moving this out of here and into my digital planner, etc. But one thing I am going to move into here is that budget list. So I don't really need Like I can have this budget at a glance that kind of reminds me of what my bills are, but I don't need to fill this out every single month. But I found these inserts at the Erin Condren store and it's basically just this spending summary and I am going to use this. Now I also did grab a budget insert from Elamon Paper Co. that I don't know which one I'm going to use 
maybe I'll use them both, but the Erin Condren insert came with a lot of these sheets of the spending summary. And I think this will be a great log and I can even put here instead of category, I can put here when it's expected to arrive and then I can check off whether it got here or not. And then I do have this budgeting one here that also has some sheets and lists, but this maybe goes a little bit more detailed than what I want to do, but I'm going to kind of experiment with the budget and keeping it in the A5 planner. The other big change that I'm going to make to this planner in particular is I have for years used my HB90. So this is my HB90 weekly planner. It has a task list, my task blocks, which is kind of my time management, and then a weekly spread, like a week on two pages. And I love to fill this out every week. I really feel lost if I don't fill this out every week, but I've always had my daily pages in here. And I've found that the busier I get, the less I'm able to really use those pages. And the busier I get, the more I really need for Renee, my operations manager, to know what my schedule is. So this is another one that's a little bit scary, and I'm going to have to develop a habit of using a digital tool, but my daily planning is going into Notion, <laughs> and I'm nervous, but I'm also excited. My weekly plans will still be here in my A5, but the daily plan will go into Notion, and I will just be printing weeklies here in my A5 binder. I also traditionally have kept some social media stuff in here, like compact vertical. I think I'm going to let go of that for next year. And instead, what I'm going to be doing is putting together a new way of running this planner. Look at this cute 2023 dashboard. That'll probably go in the front. But I bought multiple inserts. So I bought this line a day. This will become my gratitude journal, which I was using a different planner, like a totally separate planner for that. So I'm going to be downsizing from that. And instead, I'm just going to be using this line a day, which basically just has one line for every, like there's a page for every month and then one line a day. And I can just get in the habit of filling in a gratitude statement every single day for the year. And it'll all be in one place rather than using a whole entire planner or notebook. It's just these few little inserts. So one of these tabs will be gratitude. Um, there's also a yearly tracker here that has a bunch of habit tracking pages. So I'm going to experiment with that. And then there's something called a timeline, which basically is quarterly pages that you can sort of future plan. So this is going to be part of my brainstorming. She also has another timeline layout that has the whole year to sort of plan out. So sometimes when I have projects that I know are going to span multiple quarters, it's a little bit difficult to keep track of that as well as I want to in my HB90 planner. So this will help. And I will have towards the very end of the year, a new little mini course coming about how to sort of future plan or long-term plan. If you're interested in that, that'll be coming soon. So I have a bunch of new inserts and I will be totally redesigning this A5 binder. It will be my weekly planner, my gratitude planner, my budget planner, and a few other things. So I will share that with you as I develop it and it should be really fun. Okay. So let's talk about a couple other things that I thought I might use that I'm going to be giving away. And this is, I know I'm still using a lot of stuff, but hopefully you can see how much I'm really downsizing and simplifying. So speaking of simplifying, the simplified planner is Emily Lay's planner and I always love them and they're so beautiful and I highly recommend them. It, they're just beautiful planners. This one is the weekly planner and it has this weekly layout where you have lines and then checklist and then um, Saturday and Sunday are a little bit smaller here with a little checklist for the week. I love the colors of her happy stripe. I really thought I would use this. Mainly I was attracted to it because of the blue bonnets. <laughs> My now that we have just moved to Texas this year, my entire front yard turned into blue bonnets and it was so beautiful and it will always have my heart because it was just so gorgeous out there and I know it's going to come back every year. So I wanted to have this, but this planner started in August. I have not used it. I thought it would be like a family to do list. Nope haven't used it, don't have time, just causes me sadness every time it sits here. So I'll be giving this away. And even though it is partially like no good anymore, maybe somebody can redate it or at least get a chance to try it out and see if you would like it, just not going to use it. And I'm not going to feel sad about it anymore. 
Um, now we get into the Erin Condren stuff. Now I'm an affiliate for Erin Condren. It's one of my favorite brands of all time. I love the quality of the coil and the paper and the designs and I just love them. And they send me a lot of stuff for free. So then I want to find a way to use it. But I have definitely come to that point where I'm like, no longer am I going to try to find ways to use stuff. I'm just going to use what I think will serve me in the best way it can. And I'm going to let go of the rest. And hopefully at some point in the future, I will have more time to get back to just enjoying planners for the sake of them. They sent me this gorgeous weekly horizontal at a V planner that is so beautiful. It's a soft bound I adore it. I would love to keep it, but I'm just not going to use it. And I would love for somebody else to use it. So this will be the second giveaway for this particular um, video is this Eta V planner. Love them. Just not going to use it. So let's talk about how I've been using my Erin Condren's. So I currently have two Erin Condren's, actually three that I use pretty regularly. Two of them are the seven by nine sort of classic size. And the other is one of the bigger eight and a half by 11 sizes. And the reason I use multiples is because it has been serving me for years to keep my brands separate so that when I am going to brainstorm new videos for heart breathings and editorial calendar and other things like that, I have them in this one and I don't, don't get distracted by Sarah Cannon brand author stuff. And then I keep all my authory things in here so that it becomes a tool of focus for me where I can say when I'm in this planner, I'm thinking about this brand. And so these are basically monthly planners where you just have the months and then a bunch of notebook pages. So it's a notebook planner hybrid, but I have actually made them into six month planners with extra notebook pages. And I have loved this system for a long time. But where it is going wrong for me right now, I apologize for that glare, is that having multiples of these and being in this new house where I actually have multiple office spaces, which I know is such a lucky thing, I find that I'll go into one room to record a video and I'm like, where's that outline of the video? And then I have to go searching for this planner and it could be in my bedroom, it could be in my gaming room, or it could be in my office and I'm not sure where it is. And sometimes it's by the kitchen table. So I carry it around with me and then I haven't gotten a system of like where it goes back to. And because I have multiples of them, I'm constantly trying to find them. The other thing is, like I said, I now have a full-time person who relies on me to tell her when I need a blog post made or a newsletter or anything like that. And when my outlines and everything are on paper, Sometimes it just isn't as efficient as it could be if it was in a digital tool that she could access also. So there's going to be a lot of my Q1 planning will be around creating digital like habits with digital tools. I don't want to stop using this because it becomes a good brainstorming tool for me and it becomes a good place to sort of think about my strategies, but I also can't use three different planners. I need it down to one single thing. This one I've used throughout the year in different capacities. So one way is as a social media planner, I then moved that into my A5. And then the other way that I have used it more recently is as a time tracking planner. So this is what like my friend Ronnie Lauren would call a done planner. So in my A5 binder, I plan what I'm going to do. And then this is sort of a log of what actually got done, which helps me compare the two and helps me see where my time is really going in a more cohesive way. This really serves me and I want to keep using it. But like I said, I don't want to have to go searching for five different planners all over the place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take like, I'm not even kidding when I say they, they have given me a lot of planners this year. I'm going to take a combination of some of the planners that they have gifted to me, and I'm going to create one massive Franken planner. And I had a couple of requests on Instagram to share the process of creating that and then also to share a flip through of it. So I will just tell you kind of in general what that planner is going to look like, and then we'll follow up with another video. One of the planners though, that I'm not going to use is a daily duo that comes in two different planners. And this is the second half of that. The first one I gave to somebody cause I knew I wasn't going to use it and they wanted to try it out to see if they wanted to use it as their main planner. 
And now I have the second half of the year, which also is not used. So this will only be a six month planner, but this will also be in my future giveaways as a daily duo. And yes, it will just have my name on it and you'll have to just get yourself a new cover or pretend that you're Sarah Cannon for a day. <laughs> but the daily duo is really nice. I have used this in the past as my time tracking planner, but I really prefer the whole weekly view altogether. So this will be a giveaway. Then the planners that I am going to kind of use are this teacher planner. That's the focus planner that I bought when I was at the Erin Condren store. Now, the only one they had at the store was the one that started in like August or whatever, but I am actually going to redate some of those pages so they don't go to waste. But basically I'm going to be taking this teacher focus planner and this is going to become my social media brainstorming and, and promo calendar. So whenever I have ads running or I have like Instagram posts or stories I want to create, it's all going to go into this planner and I'll share with you more how that's going to happen. But it has seven, basically it has a notes page and then it has six blocks with five days for the week. And I'm going to be using it with different like Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and so on for my different brands. So this will become part of the Franken planner. Another part of it will be the hourly. So they sent me this beautiful hourly layout color blends planner. And this one will be taking the place of this entire hourly planner. And probably what I will do is create just a three month planner instead of making it a whole year when it's Franken planned, but I'll kind of let you guys know and take you through that process. But this is an hourly planner. And so this will be kind of like my time tracking done planner, my social media planner that will be now some of my social media plans are going to go into notion, but this will be kind of more like a brainstorming tool for me. And then I accidentally pulled that cover off earlier. Here's another beautiful Etta V cover. I also have this monthly planner that I had purchased to do the same thing with that I used this other one with. So I probably will pull some of the notes pages out of this and potentially the monthlies sometimes. So one of the things that I'm kind of toying around with is the idea of doing an editorial calendar for both Sarah Cannon and Heart Breathings at, in terms of a brainstorming calendar and pulling the pages out of these planners and having two sets of months in the same Franken planner so that I can have like half the planner is Sarah Cannon and half the planner is heart breathings. I haven't fully decided, but I'll let you guys know. And obviously I'll share that process with you. The other um, planner that I bought last year, I already took the cover off was a vertical planner and I have wanted for years and, and actually previous years, I have used a vertical planner, but not every single week to be a, like a memory keeping planner for my family, to be able to put photos in here and make it a true like scrapbook, right? Well, you can see how well I've used it throughout the year, like literally not at all because I just don't have time. And this was an 18 month planner. So some of it is now gone and some of it is able to be used. So what I'm going to do is this will become part of my Franken planner. And I was kind of playing around with it like this, but instead of using the dates, this is going to become kind of a project brainstorming planner where I'm going to white out these dates or put washi tape over them. And I'm going to use these boxes instead to start brainstorming different projects. Let's say I was going to do a series on YouTube about how to edit your novel. I already have one, but let's say I was doing a new one. This would be my place to be able to put what videos and what social media I would want to create around that series, what workbook and all of that. And I would use each of these boxes to brainstorm that. So this will, I feel like this Erin Condren Franken planner might not be something I use on a daily basis other than the hourly part of it but it will become very much a brainstorming tool for me, which it has been in the past too. And so all of these will kind of get merged into one, hopefully very useful planner. And what I will do is I'll create one for Q1, try it out, see what pages I use and what pages I don't, and then create something potentially slightly different for Q2 with a different setup until I find the right solution. Now, again, because I didn't make these decisions until later, I had already purchased a beautiful planner for 
the monthly planner that was going to be my heart breathings editorial planner, but now it will not be used. And as sad as it makes me to let go of this gorgeous planner, this will also be a giveaway coming up. So you guys are sensing a theme. Uh, you can always buy your own new cover for it, or I'll look and see if I have a cover that doesn't have a name on it, but this will be another giveaway, letting it go. Another planner I won't be using that I was trying to kind of use, you can sort of see here, is this family organizer. Now I think this is actually a brilliant product that they have. It's really good. It has a monthly spread and then it has like things for school, dates to remember. It has a recurring schedule for your kids. Like if they have soccer practice or other things after school, it has your family goals and habit tracking and a place to put a list. It has a lot of really good stuff. And I think that this is perfect for moms who have the time to do it. Extracurriculars, especially if you have really busy kids who are doing a lot. And then there's notebook pages that you can do whatever you want with. And I was like, oh, this will be awesome. I just haven't, again, I don't even, I'm a broken record. I don't have time. I was for a while using the monthly spread again out in my kitchen to keep track of like this. Andrew has always been at like Montessori schools, which are very different from the school he's at now, which is much more structured. And we homeschooled him all of last year. So we're a little bit out of practice with like, he's got so much more homework this year. He has more quizzes. He has like some days he has free dress and some days uniforms and some days he takes his lunch and some days he eats there. And I just have been kind of losing my mind over some of these things. And so I started this one monthly spread to keep track of it but it's still not working because it's another paper planner I have to keep up with. So before I move on, let me show you what my new solution is going to be for the family organizer and for the meal planning. Okay, so this is the digital solution to our meal planner and the family organizer, which is this skylight calendar. We got the larger size one. You can mount them on the wall or you can just put them, they have a little stand in the back here and it coordinates with your Google Calendar and you can basically see, you know, all of your family rituals. You can see your meal plan. I can see when Andrew needs to take his lunch and when he has a lunch at school that day. We can see any kind of other family events. Now you can actually do extra things that we ha haven't set up yet and you can do chores. You can look at it on a monthly view instead of just a daily view. You can also put it to sleep. And then once you put it in sleep mode, it becomes a frame and you can put pictures on it. You could have, like I could have my sister send pictures of what's going on with them if I wanted to, but we sadly don't really have a ton of family to share like pictures of kids and stuff with, but we can put our own pictures of our vacations and other things that we've been doing, or like Evie when she was little or Andrew when he was little. And that'll be really fun too. So this basically replaces two different planners and is something that every everyone can see and check every single day. So how cool is that skylight calendar? I think it's going to be really neat. It's very simple. You could do it probably with just a tablet or something a little bit less expensive, but I think it's going to be great. It's really, the kids are already getting used to like checking it. Obviously read, Evie can't read it, but um, George is checking it. So that's great. Then the other planner, and this is out of all of them, this is probably the one that is just meant for pure fun and not for like work or tracking growth or anything like that. But I am determined that this year, because they made a Hello Kitty planner, <laughs> that I'm going to keep up with memory keeping. And I'm going to, again, be creating a habit around when and what my process is. And I think that's where I've fallen short with the memory keeping before is that I didn't really have a process of when I was going to do it. So this Hello Kitty life planner that has this gorgeous vellum and these beautiful colors like pastel and peachy colors is going to become my sort of family scrapbook. And I have been over the years collecting entire like vertical kits and I'm excited to use them. The monthly kits or the monthly pages have Hello Kitty on them. And I don't know exactly what I'll keep track of on the monthly pages other than maybe like, I don't know, maybe a little drawing a day or maybe I won't do anything on the monthlies. And I don't even know how I'll use this page, maybe favorite memory of the month or something like that. But it's really the ver these vertical pages that I'm looking forward to most. And these are just going to become memory planner pages. I have a brand new printer that I can use for photo printing and I'm excited to keep track of this. And I am determined that at the end of next year, I'm going to have a full book 
of finished memories because your kids are only young once and I'm just looking forward to it. So I'm hoping that getting rid of all those other planners is going to help me to really focus in on the couple like handful that I'm going to be using and be able to really enjoy them. So now when I have free time, I know, okay, let me get into that Hello Kitty planner and let me enjoy it. So really we are down to the end here. Um, I bought this, I think at Target, it's called the Simplified Garden Journal. And I saw that Cindy had one of these and I thought I would check it out. We have purchased five acres here in Texas and it is just fertile, wonderful land. And we did have some garden boxes this year. We're currently growing broccoli. That's the only thing we're growing now, but we were really successful with like cantaloupe and zucchini. My roses are looking beautiful, but we want to have a much bigger garden. And I really want to plan to use more of the space that we have. And I mean, five acres is a lot of space. And so I want to start using it. And so this particular planner has some ideas about like, what your goals are for your journal or for your garden, um, your wish list for plants that you want to buy. We want to put in some fruit trees too. And then there's like some ideas about like what um, grows in certain months and what you would want to do in each month. Like maybe this is the time we want to buy the seeds or, you know, whatever, um, or start seedlings or whatever. And then we'll have a shopping list. Then there's like plant names and whether it's indoor or outdoor. And I've really been adding to my plant collection inside. So I'm hoping to use this as well. Um, now, Erin Condren also has kind of like a plant journal, but I think I'm going to use this one instead so that I can actually plan out my garden and see there's this garden layout that's just this grid paper that you can really start to say, we're going to plant carrots here and broccoli here. And I think this will be really fun to do with my husband. There's multiple pages of that. And then there's lots of like to-do lists that are perforated and notes pages. And then there's monthly pages too that are undated. So I'm excited to use this. Another thing that I will be using, and I use this every year, but I usually use it digitally, is the Fresh Start Planner. So this is from Amber McHugh, who is, many of you know, my business mentor. I'm in her mastermind called it, called it Accelerate. This is less of something I use as a planner and more of like a planning workbook. So the Fresh Start Planner has a lot of advice and different quotes and things like that in it. And then it has these tabs and you can kind of do some reflection. You can talk about your themes for the year. You can do some pre preparation about um, what worked, what didn't work. And this is very similar in terms of like goal setting type ideas to my HB90 planner, but this goes more into like, what products are you going to offer? How much money do you want to make next year? And so I find the questions really valuable, but most of it is pre-planning. So this is something I'll be going through in the last week or so of the year. I'm probably going to start it this coming week. And then there is a section here that is like a monthly thing. And we go through this like January game plan in our accelerate meetings once a month and we have a meeting once a week but the once a month we do the game plan and so i'm excited that she sent me this for free but i will see if these are still available if you're interested in taking a look at them with it came this little monthly thing i don't know if i'll use it y'all i just don't i'm not a fan of monday start months my HB90 planner is Sunday start months, Monday start weeks. And that's kind of what I've always been used to because that's what like Erin Condren and Happy Planner uses. And so that's what I've always used. So my brain just doesn't know what to do with Monday start weeks, but we'll see. Similar to this Laurel Denise monthly planner. So this is her monthly planner and I love how big these boxes are. This is a nice big planner, but it is a Monday start but I think that I can actually use this again for some of that like future planning, but I'm not going to consider this part of my like core planner stuff. This will just be like, if I want to sit down and map out what weeks I might want to do something, I can kind of use this as scratch paper to sort of plan things out. Um, but it is a really nice mon monthly planner. It's probably one of the nicest ones I've ever seen. That's just a monthly planner and nothing else. So if you've been looking for one and you love Monday starts, highly recommend the Laurel Denise one. Not a planner, but more of a notebook. Um, I also have 
this cloth and paper happy planner size. And I just got this new little cover from planner babe. And I do keep notes about courses that I'm taking and stuff in here. And I do have some inserts from cloth and paper and a lot of like pages in here that I keep notes in. So this will be another thing that kind of goes in my planner section, but isn't necessarily a planner. There's no like weekly planner pages in here. It's just notes on courses. But again, this is another thing I've been thinking about. Like, why don't I just take the notes on the courses that I'm taking in my iPad? So this might be another thing that sort of bites the dust or goes on the, uh, goes on the shelf for a little while. That is basically my planner lineup. So I'm going to run through it with you. The actual things that I'm using again, just super, super quick because I've talked about so many different ones. I think it'll be good just to run back through them again. So B6 Stalogy becomes my plotting planner. Sterling Inc. becomes my six months for life and my tarot journal. And also back to the Hobonichi Techo five-year journal for my kind of evening memories. Simplified garden journal, which again will not be a daily use kind of thing, just sort of an every once in a while planning thing. I'm going to be staying in my ride or die A5 rings, but I'm going to be revamping the interior of these other than the HP90 gold pages, like daily or weekly pages. Hello Kitty Erin Condren for my memory keeping and Erin Condren Franken Planner for my sort of promo calendar brainstorming and time tracking. And that is it, which this, I mean, I will have this fresh start planner, but this again, won't be a daily use. This will be mostly used up just once a month, uh, in those meetings. And other than that, it's going to be all happening in my iPad and my computer. And compared to the number of planners I used in the last several years, this is massively pared down. And I think I'm going to be really, really happy and excited that I took the time to give things away and try a different system. Now I am just briefly, I know this video is super long, but hopefully you guys have been enjoying it. I'm going to also just briefly share with you how I have my notion set up now, but there's going to be so much getting added to it. I've been taking crazy amounts of notes inside here about what I want my notion set up to be. And I'm going to be spending time over the next few weeks setting it up. So I will be sharing that notion set up the, um, Franken planner set up and my new a five set up over the next few weeks. Some of it will come in January and some of it will come this month, probably if I have time to record it. So let's talk a little bit more about that. One of the things I love about notion is that I can use it on this iPad from my bed. I can use it from my phone if I'm out at a restaurant and I can use it from my desktop. Anywhere you have a web browser, you can use it. And I love that because it's going to allow me to coordinate with my team better. So let me show you that setup real quick. Okay. So here is just a brief view of my notion dashboard. I've been working on this sort of off and on for a while to make it an aesthetic, beautiful place for myself. And it's been really great for me and Renee to have. So we have a team space called Heartlandia where we have our processes, our <clears throat> tutorials, keep track of all my courses and resets and, you know, all of that sort of thing. Spooktacular, different projects we're working on together. I would like to keep my entire editorial calendar inside Notion. And there's lots of different examples of how to set that up on YouTube. But the one we have now is just not working well for me. So part of my goals for the rest of this year are to revamp the editorial calendar. But then I also have this section here in, I call it Sarah's world, um, that I have taken some time to make it look nice and pretty and more aesthetic. You can add apps to make it aesthetic. You can add gifts. You can change colors and different things. So if you guys want to see a full video when this whole thing is set up, definitely let me know. It can be a bit overwhelming to set it up yourself. Like you can see what other people do and go, wow, that's really cool. But then when you go to set it up yourself, it's going to be a time investment and there's a learning curve. So that's just my kind of warning about Notion is it's a rabbit hole you can go down and get lost in for a while. Um, so I want to have basically a few different things on my daily or on my main dashboard. One, I want it to be a daily to-do list basically to take the place of my 
normal daily planner that was a paper planner. And so I'm still going to have it by goals. So goal one, these are the tasks I need to get done. It might even be a weekly dashboard. I just have to put a little bit more thought into this. I have my like daily recurring tasks or admin tasks for the week and things like that. Then I have a writing log, which I shared in another video before that I'm going to be kind of playing around with a little bit. So like I have it set up already for January. Let's say I'm working on disappearance of Vanessa Shaw and I'll be editing it. I can put what my goal is for the month, how much word count I want to get done. Let's say I want to do 90,000 in edits. I can write it here so that I keep my goals front of mind. So I also have this monthly word count tracker here where I can put in what project I was working on, how many words, how many sprints for the day, how long it took me and that sort of thing. And this is one of the reasons I really would like to move it into a digital format so that I can see over the course of a year, like how many words did I write? How many sprints did it take me? Because that data is difficult to just automatically sum together when you're writing it on paper. It's so much easier when it's digital and you can have a computer figure up those things and get averages and all of that. So I would like to keep the more data type related stuff in Notion. Then I have a section that I could put my intention, like I want to finish edits this month um, and start revealing covers or, you know, pre-order process or whatever. And so that way I know what my goals is, what my intentions are for the month. And then I was thinking maybe some other kind of progress tracker down here per book or something like that. But I, obviously I'm still kind of working on it, but eventually I will be able to hopefully see my entire year. And then I'll have one single database that tells me how many words I wrote, how many sprints I did and that kind of thing. Then I also have this daily diary thing where I started setting this up back in September and then realized when I was doing my Q2 or Q4 planning that it just wasn't going to be something I had time to develop the habit of in Q4. So it's was moved into Q1. So now I'm going to be working on it. And I can say how I felt for the day, how many steps I had, what my productivity level is, how much water, um, what did I do for fun and games? Did I read that day or whatever? Um, did I work on my story? Did I work out? And then I have a link to a Spotify playlist here that I can open up for the morning. I also have a little message to myself and I have a checklist here of the spiritual things like my spiritual routines that I follow in the morning, afternoon and evening. And then I have some other journaling and stuff. And then I threw in a picture here of something I used to do in good notes, just as an idea of like, maybe I want to get back to that. So I can just fill out a brand new day here and I can put in terms of the cover, I could put any kind of photo of the family for the day. So it just becomes like a daily diary. And I think that's really cool. And you just press untitled and it repopulates that entire um, system that I had going. So templates are very powerful inside Notion and I want to be able to use those. You can also do Kanban boards inside Notion. And so Renee and I are going to be setting up more Kanban boards for our processes and our workflow. And there's just going to be a lot of stuff. So my, a lot of my daily to do's, my editorial calendar, all of that is going to be moving into Notion. And I will share that with you guys when it's all set up. Okay. So that is my planner set up, you guys. Um, this is, you know, it's going to be a little bit different. And I am excited to do a little bit more digitally. I'm a little bit nervous. And maybe who knows, like a few months in, I'm going to be like, never mind, we're going back to a thousand planners. I don't know. But I think that I'll be utilizing the iPad more and I'll be cutting back on the physical notebooks and planners that I have. And what I'm really hoping to do is start really like immersing myself in the planners I do have and using them to their fullest potential and really maximizing those handful of planners and then just releasing the rest of it. Now I do still have a story journal that will be just a fun notebook and I have some other notebooks that I do keep but I'm also going to be using less of those. And you'll see that in the notebook challenge. We won't have a notebook challenge for December, but I'll continue it on in January because this kind of takes the place of it. But yeah, that's my planner lineup. Let me know if you've been feeling similar way of let's simplify, let's streamline. I could, I don't think I could get myself down to like a single planner because I just love to use and I have multiple uses for them and I need them, but I feel like this is a good start. So let me know how you're doing don't forget to subscribe to this channel 
and make sure that you comment down below so that you can get entered to win one of those two awesome planners and keep a lookout for the new planners coming up. Also, if you're watching this when it first comes out tomorrow, December 11th is when my HP 90 bootcamp starts. So definitely come join us. This is the biggest class of new students by far that we've ever had. And I think it's going to just be amazing. I also, for those of you that are on the witchier side, <laughs> this is not my typical content, but some people have been asking for it over on my Sarah Cannon side. So I put this on my heart breathings teachable site. I just opened up a mini course called manifest your best year. And this is going to be about like crystals and manifesting and energy magic. So if you want to come join that, the details will be for you down below. And then again, we'll have that plan your future author career mini course coming later in the year. December 17th, we will have our plan your 2023 writing year, which will be a free live stream to plan out your year like we do every year with a free workbook. So lots of amazing stuff coming up. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed seeing what planners I'm using and how the system will go. And let me know what planners you're using in the comments. All right. Love you guys. Bye. Mm -hmm.